Today on Smacky's Garage, I'm doing a project that a lot of you have asked me to do, and that's do a compression test on my five liter Coyote F-150. So the truck is uh, 2018, it has 100,000 miles on it. We're gonna see how the compression's holding up and how does it compare to Ford specs. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it. For a compression test like this, Ford actually has a way to do it, but in order to do it, you need to find a way to reprogram something in the computer or program something in the computer to keep the wide, throttle wide open because that's how you're supposed to run a compression test. I'm gonna see if I can do it differently. I am not suggesting you do it the way that I'm doing it, but I'm gonna go ahead and try, see what I can get. So with that, I'm not gonna make you guys watch me take out all the plugs and everything on this. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out and then we're gonna go ahead and jump right into doing the compression test on the truck. So let's go ahead and jump to when all the spark plugs are out. So not going too far into it, but plugs come out, these eight millimeters come out and then you just go ahead and pull the coils out and then remove the plugs. All right, so all the spark plugs are out. Everything is sitting over here to the side. Now I can go ahead and get this ready. So what I think I'm gonna do, so fuse 50 on mine is the fuel pump. So I need to go in here and move fuse 50. And with fuse 50 out of the way, I should be able to do a compression test. And we're gonna try it out on one first, see how it goes. So this one is the fuel pump 50 on mine. So this is a compression tester that I typically use. I'll link it in the description. This is, I use this on my snowmobiles, on my cars, whenever I need to do some testing. So I'm gonna go ahead, connect this up, and then we're gonna see how it works. The compression tester is really simple. You have the gauge here, which has PSI and KPA on it. And then it also has this little relief valve here to let the pressure out when you need to. Now we're gonna take the second half. So within the kit, there's a bunch of pieces. This is one of them. So this thread here matches up with the thread that's on the spark plug. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna hand thread it in. We're not gonna tighten it with any tools. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this, and we're gonna plug this in. After we plug this in, so we're gonna crank it through five cycles, and then we're gonna check to see where the compression is. Now our goal is really to see what's the maximum pressure that you see within this gauge, but we're gonna see where I end up. So with that, let's go ahead Let's take a look at how the truck is set up and then we can start our test. All right, so I have this on cylinder one. I'm gonna go ahead, I have to put my foot all the way down because you need to have the throttle open while you do this. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run this now. Now the way that I'm doing this is I have the compression tester here. I'm gonna zero it out. And then I'm gonna put it in each cylinder and then I have this here so that I can squeeze this and watch the gauge. And then while I'm doing that, I can run the compression check on it. So this here is a remote start switch. So you connect one side of the connectors to the battery or a positive terminal, and then the second side to the solenoid, and you can use it remotely to turn on the starter. So I went from the battery to the solenoid, and on that solenoid, that's how I'm triggering the starter to work. So with all this together, I should just be able to push a button and it'll work. This is cylinder one. Cylinder three. Cylinder four. Cylinder five. Cylinder six. Cylinder seven. And lastly, we're doing cylinder eight. Okay, so the testing's complete, and you can see all my readings are the pretty high side, probably higher than I expected. So I think I did everything right, which was turning off the fuel. I removed the fuel pump. I completely took the ignition out of the process by putting in the auxiliary starter switch over here and just running between the solenoid and the battery. And it looks like everything is pretty much in the high range. I can tell you everything looks higher than I would expect. We're gonna go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into the numbers to see exactly what I have and we'll, and we'll talk about that, see how they are. I think I did everything correct. I'm not 100% sure. So if there's anything down in the comments that I'm missing, make sure you go ahead and tell me exactly what I did wrong. But you know, 
looking at this, kind of encouraging since all the compressions are up in the above 230 range. Okay, so it's time to look at the numbers. I have them here on the computer and let's talk about how they're measured and then we'll go through my compression cylinder by cylinder. Okay, so here is the compression test, kind of how it gets measured. Oil and crank crate case is correct, so yes. Um, we did operating temperature. We removed all the spark plugs. I had to force the throttle plates in wide open. We then installed a compression gauge in cylinder one. Then we put that auxiliary switch on the side in the starter circuit. When the ignition switches off, run it for five seconds and record the highest reading, and then do it again. Note the approximate number of compression strokes necessary to obtain the highest reading. So that I did do after it gets pretty high, but after the five compression strokes, that's when we read the highest reading. And then repeat the test on each cylinder, crank the engine, the same number of compression strokes. So that's what we did, and here's how we're gonna evaluate it. So the indicative compression pressures are considered within specification if the lowest reading cylinder is at least 75% of the highest reading. So here's a compression limit chart. The way that I believe you read this is when I look at it, it's gonna be this 150 is the highest and then 113 is 75% of that highest. So with that, that tells me, you know, if my highest compression cylinder is a 244, if my lowest is above 183, it passes a compression test. So let's go ahead, let's look at my numbers. So cylinder one is front passenger side, cylinder five is front driver side. So with this, all the testing that we did, cylinder one came in between 220 and 225. I'm just gonna call it 220 PSI. Cylinder two came in at 225. Cylinder three came in at 225. Cylinder four came in at 240. Cylinder five came in at 225. Cylinder six came in at 245. Cylinder seven came in at 240. And cylinder eight came in at 230. Now with this, so my highest cylinder compression right here is gonna be 245. And my lowest is gonna be right here on cylinder one at 220. So that's actually within, just quick math, 10%. So 245 is high, 220 is low. Now let's go look with these numbers and we're gonna compare them to the sheet that we have. We said the highest compression, highest reading, which was 245. So we're gonna call it right here, 245. That would mean my lowest would need to be around 183 to 184 in order for it to fail this test. All right, so looking at the results of this test, all of my cylinders are within specification. The highest seems to be a 240, doing it exactly the way that Ford said to do it, and the lowest is at 220. So great readings. So all the cylinders are within 10% of each other, so which is absolutely great. That means things are still good after 100,000 miles. So really happy to see that on my track. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. You know, it was a good follow up from my video where I was doing the boroscope, looking on the inside of my engine and seeing what wear I saw. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. But thanks for tuning in this week on Smacky's Garage. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.